While the Wano arc ended with both Kaido and Big Mom being thrown into a magma pool, this is more than likely not the end of either character. One unresolved plot thread from Wano is that Big Mom considers Kaido to owe her a lifelong debt. With Kaido incapacitated, Big Mom is now presented with a golden opportunity. This video will go over the idea of Big Mom taking Kaido's soul as repayment for this debt, and with this new power becoming potentially the strongest character on the seas. Despite Kaido and Big Mom going through a literal war before being submerged in magma, the likelihood of either of them being dead is very small. Both emperors are regarded as natural calamities by the world at large, with them being demonstrably impervious to more than 99% of the damage one can throw at them. Even in the rare case their external defenses are breached, Kaido and Big Mom are able to take some of the strongest attacks in the story without falling. Furthermore, the One Piece story outside flashbacks follows a strangely consistent logic where characters dying even to seemingly lethal damage is very rare. For example, even when relatively low-level characters are hit by attacks from some of the strongest fighters in the world, they are more likely to be knocked out than killed. While deaths still occur, they are far more random and infrequent, not necessarily connected to how strong the killing blow was. Another thing that serves as an indicator of a character surviving an apparent death scene is them still having a role to play in the story. Characters such as Bellamy, Pound, and Ikaram came back dozens if not hundreds of chapters after their apparent death scenes, only to continue playing a role in the story. Others, such as Sabo, even go through multiple death scenes only to come back. While we do not know whether the Emperors still have story left in them, it is arguable that both Kaido and especially Big Mom have more than enough potential that they should still have a role to play. Now that it has been established that both of the Yonko can still be alive, the next question to ask is how they could get out of the magma pool. This video is going to assume that the two of them have actually already gotten out, and that it happened during the Wano arc. After the raid on Onigashima ended and the two Yonko were defeated, there was a volcanic eruption off the coast of Wano. So far in the manga, this eruption has had zero relevance to the plot. A possible reason why it was included could actually be that the eruption rocketed Kaido and Big Mom out from underground and into the seas outside Wano. While this might seem like a worse situation considering that the two emperors are devil fruit users and would now simply drown, they actually still had allies in the area. Big Mom's chanter ship with all of the crew she brought to Wano except Perospero was still in Wano's waters after the raid ended. We also know from before that they were in possession of Big Mom's Vibre card. As Vibre cards start burning up when the user's life is fading, the Big Mom pirates would immediately know to hurry to the card's location to rescue their captain. In this scenario, the Big Mom pirates would rescue both Big Mom and Kaido and sail away from the area, as they did not have the power to challenge Luffy without the Yonko. If Luffy himself is also any reference, it would take weeks for the Emperors to regain consciousness. However, it would also be likely that the one to regain their senses first would be Big Mom. She received far less damage than Kaido during the raid and was conscious when she fell into the magma, as opposed to Kaido, who was actually knocked out by Luffy's final attack. Big Mom was also confident that this would not be enough to finish her off. Furthermore, the Big Mom pirates would naturally give greater medical care to their captain over Kaido. If Big Mom were to wake up, she would essentially have Kaido in the palm of her hand. In a way, it would be a reversal of the situation Big Mom was in at the end of Wano Act 2, where Kaido would now be the one alone and surrounded by Big Mom and her subordinates. As said in the start of the video, Big Mom believes that Kaido owes her a lifelong debt for what happened during the God Valley incident 38 years ago. This is because it was actually Big Mom who gave Kaido his Dragon Devil food on that day. As we know from her interactions with characters like Jinbei and Petro, Big Mom is also very keen on her debts being repaid. Now that Kaido has lost his entire empire after the events of Wano, there is very little he can repay Big Mom with other than his own life. This however could be exactly what Big Mom would want. At the moment, the things that drive her the most are vengeance on the worst generation and becoming Pirate King. To achieve either, Big Mom is going to require more power. This is where Big Mom's own devil fruit, the Soru Soru no Mi, would help her. With the Soru Soru no Mi, Big Mom has the ability to use the power of other people's souls. This is mostly seen in her creating sentient beings known as homies with her fruit. The stronger the soul, 
the more powerful the homie will be. As seen in the homies of Zeus, Prometheus, Napoleon and Hera being particularly powerful because they were made out of Big Mom's own soul. Big Mom also thought that someone like Luffy's soul could be used to create strong homies. However, Big Mom can also power herself up with her Devil Fruit powers. This was seen in her fight against Kid and Law, where Big Mom first uses her own life force to make herself stronger and later to heal some of the damage she's received. As Kaido is one of the strongest beings on the planet, Big Mom getting her hands on his soul could give her an unprecedented level of power. If this were to happen, it is more likely that Linlin would simply use Kaido's soul to power herself up rather than creating new homies. As seen with homies like King Baum and Zeus, they are not automatically loyal to their creator. As seen in her creation of Hera, Big Mom also seems to prefer her fighting style revolving around lightning and fire manipulation combined with swordsmanship. One might question if Big Mom would be willing to do this to Kaido, as Big Mom says that she views him like a son. However, during Whole Cake Island, we get multiple instances of Big Mom being willing to kill even her biological children if they get in her way. Just because Big Mom would take Kaido's soul or life force doesn't also mean that Kaido would die. Like with Zeus, Big Mom could still leave Kaido with a piece that would let him live. Still, just like with Zeus, this would mean that Kaido would be significantly weakened. Next, this video will discuss how Big Mom taking Kaido's soul could affect both of their characters. Starting with Big Mom. The way Big Mom's soul powers work is where soul energy is somewhat synonymous with lifespan. We saw this for example with Big Mom using a year of her lifespan to make herself stronger against Kid and Law. In theory, if she were to take most of Kaido's life force, Big Mom could actually regain much of her own lifespan. This might also return her to her more fair and younger form. For reference, Big Mom throughout her life has undergone several different stages, where she at times was actually very thin. This could be at least somewhat explained due to the extremely high rate of metabolism she possesses, as we saw at the end of Whole Cake Island. Regardless of how it would affect her physical shape, Big Mom would undoubtedly become one of the strongest characters in the series if she took most of Kaido's life force. As a Yonko and someone frequently compared to Kaido, Big Mom was arguably already at that level during the 1 arc. However, with this power-up, Big Mom could actually go even beyond that and rival the very very strongest characters like Shanks. Kaido being weakened could also be an interesting new direction to take his character. It could be argued that much of his personality revolved around the might makes right mentality, where the strong get to decide how the world runs. Kaido also clearly viewed himself as the strongest before being defeated by Luffy, thinking that no one in the world could match him. Kaido losing this defining trait of his character and being reduced to a mere grunt would be a completely new type of character arc in One Piece. While past villains such as Hody Jones also lost their strength after being beaten, no one in the story has been as personally defined by strength as Kaido. This could also be where Kaido would finally start thinking about the things he's been neglecting over the years, such as his relationship with Yamato. If you've also neglected to press the like button until now, consider doing it now to help out the video. I would really appreciate it. Another interesting possibility is that Big Mom would make Kaido a part of his crew by marrying him off to one of her daughters. For one candidate, Smooth is already on the chanter ship and we saw during one note that Kaido is fond of taller women. If this were to happen, Big Mom could leave Kaido with enough life force that he'd be around the same level as the rest of the sweet commanders. This could also harken back to their past, where Big Mom was interested in Kaido becoming her follower. While Kaido could find the idea of serving Lin Lin not to his liking, he might not have anywhere else to go at this point in the story. He could also simply be too scared of the newly powered up Lin Lin to refuse her. With the scenario of Big Mom powering herself up with Kaido's soul being established, the video will next look at what Lin Lin would do with this newfound power. This is a very difficult question to answer, as the Big Mom pirates are currently set at all sides. While Big Mom was in Wano, her territory was successively raided by both Jerma and the Blackbeard pirates. The former ended up freeing Nichi and Yonji while the latter ended up capturing Pudding, whom Big Mom would require to read the road pony clips with her three-eyed clan's ability. Blackbeard is also not the only member of the worst generation Big Mom would be mad at. Big Mom still has her vendetta against Luffy for everything he's done to her. Big Mom also swore vengeance on Kid and Law for having defeated her on Onigashima. There is also whatever fate befall Perospero after he was defeated by Nekomamushi on Onigashima. Personally, I think it's very likely that he is now in a world government prison along with most of the Beast Pirates. 
When Green Bull came to Wano, he fought King and Queen in the Udon prisoner mines and planned to take them with him as captives when he left Wano. King and Queen were likely already being held captive in Udon by Luffy's alliance. This is because when Green Bull came to the mines, Papa Nuki was also present. Papa Nuki is a character who was taken control of by Tama's Devilhood ability in Wano Act 2. As Tama's ability has a cooldown of one month, this would mean that Papa Nuki at this point was still loyal to Tama. This would make it impossible for Papa Nuki to still be loyal to King and Queen, meaning that he was more than likely guarding them. If true, this likely means that Wano's other defeated enemies, including Perros Perro, were also being held at Udon. By extension, this would mean that they are now in marine custody. Getting back to Big Mom, beyond these enemies, there is also her original plan to go for the One Piece with Kaido. Now that more information has surfaced, I believe this meant that Kaido and Big Mom planned on challenging the man marked by flames who reportedly owns the Fort Road Pony as many other New World crews had also heard of this man, it is more than likely that Big Mom with her intel network had caught wind of the mysterious black ship holding the last road pony cliff. With these targets in mind, Big Mom has no shortage of things to pursue after Wano. Arguably though, one of these targets is far more appetizing than the rest. Honky D. Luffy is probably the person Big Mom hates the most out of anyone in the world. In chronological order, Luffy told Big Mom that he ate all of her candy at Fishman Island. He then later came to her territory in Dotland, where Luffy and the Straw Hats defeated both Cracker and Katakuri, stole a rubbing of her old pony cliff, ruined the tea party, broke Mother Caramel's photo, and caused several of Big Mom's subordinates to deflect her crew. The Big Mom pirates also believed that Luffy was the one who ripped the tomato paco with explosives and orchestrated the destruction of Whole Cake Chateau. Then during Wano, Luffy once again ruined Big Mom's day by breaking into the fire festival and causing a war. Hate would however not be Big Mom's sole motivation for going after the Straw Hats. At the moment, Luffy holds rubbings of three of the four road pony cliffs whereas Big Mom has only one at Whole Cake Island. Luffy also has Robin on his crew, whom Big Mom already took an interest in capturing and using to read the road pony cliffs during one of The Straw Hats after leaving Egghead Island could also be accompanied by Dr. Vegapunk. These two would motivate Big Mom to go after them. Vegapunk is the government's leading scientist on the study of gigantism, and we've seen that he has for example successfully gigantified the Seraphim. As Big Mom's dream is to grow all of her family to the size of giants so that they can eat with her at eye level, she would be very keen on capturing Megapunk. While pursuing someone like Law or Blackbeard could also motivate Big Mom, her hatred for the Straw Hat is likely far greater, and targeting them would also earn her much better rewards. At the moment though, Big Mom would likely be too late to be involved in the Egghead arc, meaning that if it were to happen, she would have to attack the Straw Hats in a later arc. One interesting location for this conflict would be Elbath. The Straw Hats themselves are likely to head there because of Robin wanting to reunite with Saul and to learn the knowledge he rescued from Ohara. Considering Big Mom's history with the Giants, the Straw Hats going there would give added motivation for her to return to Elbath. For years, Big Mom has wanted to take control of the Giants and use their might to become Pirate King. This is partly motivated by her wanting to end her feud with the Giants and them being one of the missing races from Totland. Big Mom herself could also be interested in the knowledge on the ancient history that is kept on Elba. For example, she had also kept two regular pony cliffs in Whole Cake Island's treasure room. If she were to be significantly powered up by taking Kaido's life force, Big Mom could finally see herself as being strong enough to subdue the giants. Additionally, going to Elbaf could give Big Mom the chance to get her vengeance on the Kid Pirates, if they are still in the area. To make sure that she doesn't suffer another loss, perhaps after hearing from Kaido how powerful Gear 5th Luffy is, Big Mom could first go to Totland to take her entire crew with her to Elbaf rather than just the expeditionary force that followed her to one. Big Mom's inclusion in a potential Elbaf arc would do much in a way of wrapping up the remaining threads of her character. Big Mom is still unaware of what happened to Mother Caramel and the other Lamb's House orphans 63 years ago, with the only people who know the truth being Strausen and the Elbaf Giants. Furthermore, Big Mom coming back here would finally give a chance for her fight with Luffy to happen. For context, it is not only Big Mom who wants to fight Luffy, but vice versa. During Bunk Hazard, Luffy tells Law that he plans on defeating all of the Yonko. Luffy also explicitly expresses his desire to fight Big Mom in the future on multiple occasions. Arguably, 
Luffy's rivalry with Big Mom is his greatest in the entire manga, as it has been actively built up far more than with any other character in the story. While Luffy fighting characters such as Shanks and Blackbeard has been built up for longer, Luffy and Big Mom have been directly engaging with each other over multiple arcs without ever having their full one-on-one -on -one fight. Now that Luffy has finally become a Yonko in his own right, Big Mom could be an ideal stepping stone to see if he can beat a fellow Emperor by himself without any outside interference like there was with Kaido. Likewise, the whole Big Mom Pirates crew coming to Elbaf could present several interesting matchups against the Straw Hats. Sanji already had a moment with Katakuri back during his wedding with Buddy, where he managed to dodge Katakuri's jelly bean despite Katakuri using Future Sight. As Sanji is also a character who specializes in observation hockey, him fighting Katakuri could be where he himself would unlock future sight like Luffy did. Relating to this, Katakuri is a character who fights using devil food generated mochi, which is food. This could mean that Sanji fighting him would give Sanji the rare opportunity to use his hands as he would be fighting against food, like we saw in his fight against Vanse during Water 7. While on the topic, one might question if Katakuri would even be strong enough of a challenge for Sanji at this point considering how powerful he's grown since Whole Cake Island. For this, you might consider checking out my video on why Katakuri is arguably still one of the strongest characters in the new world. Another interesting matchup would be Jinbei vs Charlotte Smoothie. While we've seen little of Smoothie in combat, her Devil Fruit ability is very much a counter to Jinbei's. The Chipo Chipo Nomi allows the user to drain the moisture out of both people and the environment, rather like what Crocodile is able to do with the Sunasuna Nomi. In theory, Smoothie could drain the arena of all water and force Jinbei to fight with just his martial arts. This kind of a fight could also be an opportunity to demonstrate Jinbei's analytical skills, which were commended by even Vegapunk. Jinbei has already demonstrated that he's one of the more tactical straw hats during combat. He also used to serve in the Big Mom Pirates, meaning that Jinbei would likely already know much about Smoothie's fighting style. There are also the lower-ranked Big Mom Pirates officers like Oven and Daifuku, who were actually a menace to the crew during Whole Cake Island. They could serve as a good milestone fights for weaker straw hats like Chopper and Brook to see how much they have grown since that arc. If Kaido were to also come with Big Mom to Elbaf, the arc could present him with some very interesting matchups. While this video goes off the idea of Big Mom taking most of Kaido's life force and leaving him severely weakened, he could still be a force to be reckoned with even in this state. For example, Whitebeard even as an old man who was sick and refused to take his medication managed to fight against Navy Admirals. For Kaido, arguably one of the most interesting matchups for him would be Eustace Kid if he is still on Elbaf by the time the arc happens. Despite Kit sparing vengeance on Kaido for what he did to him and Killer, Kit only ever got to land two attacks on Kaido during the entire Wano arc. Kit getting an actual one-on-one -on -one fight against a weakened Kaido on Elbaf could be an opportunity to end his feud with the Yonko and for Kit to return to the win column. The fight itself could actually be very different from the classes the two had on the Onigashima rooftop. Considering that the gap between the two characters should have grown much smaller, it could actually now be powerful enough to take away Kaido's club with his Devil Fruit's magnetism. Kaido losing his main weapon could be very refreshing, as it would mean that he would have to rely more on his Devil Fruit and whatever unarmed skills he has. On the topic of Kaido's Devil Fruit, the events of the Wano arc could have unexpectedly led to him awakening the Uo Uo no Mi model Seiryu. If Luffy is any reference, it could be that mythical sons need to die to achieve their awakening. This could actually be the reason why Kaido was so obsessed with the idea of dying to the point where he attempted suicide as a hobby. Kaido certainly talks to Luffy in a way that implies that he is very versed with the mechanics of Devil Food Awakening. If true, the Awakening could compensate for Kaido potentially losing most of his life force to Big Mom. Finally, this video will discuss whether Kaido and Big Mom should return in the first place. There is an argument that Wano should be the end of both of their characters, and that the final saga should focus more on other villains such as Blackbeard and Akainu. I personally do not have anything against this notion. Kaido and Big Mom being left out of the final saga could well result in a better story than the two of them coming back. However, as alluded to in the start of the video, the best argument for bringing Kaido and Big Mom back is that both of them are still surrounded by a series of unanswered questions. This is also not in reference to just things involving their past with the Rocks Pirates. 
questions such as how both of them knew of the importance of the road to Pony Cliffs even before Roger reached Left Tail could well be answered in an extended flashback on the Roger Pirates, presented by other characters, such as Garp. The argument for bringing Big Mom and Kaido back is that there are several other unanswered questions that are related specifically to them. For Kaido, we still do not know what exactly it means that he's an Oni. Kaido himself thinks that he is different from humans, and even the One Piece world at large seemingly views him as a creature rather than a human. However, based on his flashback, Kaido comes from a country where seemingly every other citizen is a human, further mystifying what Kaido's true race is. The question of the Oni also extends to Yamato, who is referred to as the Oni Princess. We so far have no idea who Yamato's mother could be or why the melancholic Kaido would even sire a child in the first place. The mystery of the Oni also extends to Kaido's headquarters of Onigashima. According to Marco, Onigashima is actually not the island's original name. The massive skull itself is also a very unique structure. If it actually once belonged to a living creature, that being would have to be larger than any we've ever seen in the One Piece world. Even bigger than a giant elephant like Shunisha that is able to carry an entire country on its back. What is possible is that Onigashima is also not originally from Wano, but was carried there by Kaido with the flame clouds when he occupied the country. This could mean that Onigashima's origin would also reveal something about Kaido's past and nature. As mysterious as Kaido still is though, the questions surrounding Big Mom's character are arguably even more extensive. She is probably the most abnormal of any character ever introduced in the story of One Piece. To begin with, even as a child, she was known as a natural calamity that had to be exiled because of the damage she caused. Even as a five-year-old child, Lindin was able to kill grown bears and giants, and Mother Caramel thought that she had the potential to become a navy admiral. Her potential as a fighter is further emphasized by Big Mom seemingly being a very inactive character. From what we were told on Whole Cake Island, Big Mom has her children do most of her fighting for her, with the pirates invading Totland rarely ever getting to see Big Mom's face. Despite this inactivity, Big Mom still managed to become one of the strongest characters in the story. Big Mom's abnormalities are also not tied to just her strength. She suffers from a very peculiar case of hunger pains, where she will ravage the area until she receives the specific type of food she craves. For example, Big Mom's children thought she would destroy their entire country if she did not receive her wedding cake. The hunger pains are also connected to her abnormal rate of metabolism, which was discussed before in the video. Further abnormalities include Big Mom being able to emit a scream that is able to incapacitate someone as strong as Katakuri, and destroy airborne missiles. Big Mom is also by far the largest human being seen in the One Piece world towering over even other oversized humans such as Queen. There is also the thing that earned her the name Big Mom in the first place. Her Linlin has been able to give birth to 85 children, including several half-human hybrids of different races. So far, the manga has given no hint to why Big Mom is such an outlier. Based on what little we saw of them, her biological parents appear to be completely regular people. While other genetic freaks, such as Kosuki Oden, do exist in the series, None of them are comparable to how much of an anomaly Big Mom is compared to the rest of the cast. Going beyond her being a freak of nature, Big Mom also has more personal aspects of her character that have been left unexplored by the story. For example, Big Mom somehow possesses fighting techniques of the giants. This is peculiar because there are reportedly no giants in her territory, and the giants universally hate her. It is thus very interesting as to who might have taught her these techniques. Another thing to consider is that Big Mom has yet to display her Devil Fruit Awakening. As addressed in one of my previous videos, Big Mom is actually one of the most experienced Devil Fruit users in the story, having had her fruit for over 60 years. As Paramecia types are seemingly the easiest Devil Fruits to awaken, it is very odd that a Yonko level fighter with her her experience has not managed to unlock this power. Perhaps the most important unanswered question though is her shift from going from an innocent child wanting to create an utopia to a morally bankrupt villain willing to kill even her own children. This is a major part of Lin Lin's character that her flashback seemingly skipped. While it could be credited to the bad influence she got from being raised by Streusen, it would also be a hint to something more sinister having happened when she seemingly ate Mother Caramel. 
as it stands, the revelation of Mato Caramel actually being a trafficker selling children to the government has had no bearing on the plot. There is also a striking resemblance between Mother Caramel and the Big Mom of today. This also extends to Big Mom's personality, where her putting her own interests above everything else, even her own children, is a trait very reminiscent of Mother Caramel. Yet, this is also juxtaposed with Big Mom even as an adult still wanting to create an utopia, which is something Mother Caramel would have had no interest in. This benevolent side of Big Mom's character was also seen during Wano Act 2 with the amnesiatic personality of Olin, perhaps indicating that Lin Lin's good side is more dormant within her mind. In a way, many of Lin Lin's childhood aspirations have seemingly gotten perverted over time. While she as a child wanted to create a country where every race could live together in peace, this later morphed into Big Mom seeking rare beings and holding them in captivity. As Mother Caramel was an experienced user of the soul fruit, it is not impossible for her to have done something that left her mark on Linnin before she was devoured. At the moment, the good and evil sides of Big Mom's psyche could certainly be described as unnatural or even contradictory. This is actually somewhat reminiscent of Blackbeard, who himself is described by many to be an outlier among humans. Both Kaido and Big Mom are arguably some of the most important characters in the story of One Piece. Both had been relentlessly built up since Aeneas Lobby and both received some of the longest arcs in the series dedicated to them. While it is possible that their time in the manga has come to an end, it would be rather unprecedented for there to be this many leftover questions surrounding their characters. One Piece as a story has also already had a history of bringing back old villains after their initial fall, as we have seen recently with characters such as Crocodile and Luchi. Also, while we are currently in the last stretch of the story, in the Jump Festa interview of 2023, Eiichiro Oda stated that despite it being the final saga, the manga is not going to be ending anytime soon. For reference, the final saga of Naruto, a significantly shorter and less ambitious manga, lasted for almost 250 chapters. Likewise, the Eke Tark has already shown that the final saga of One Piece will take things slow if necessary, with big chunks of the arc being dedicated to characters with relatively little bearing on the overarching main story. While not a guarantee that they'll return, Kaido and Big Mom's characters still have a lot of potential. Their return could also retroactively make their previous appearances in the story better if we found out more about their characters. After all, this has already happened many times with other villains in the story. If you are still interested in watching more of this channel's content after watching this behemoth of a video, you should check out this video, where I go over how the man marked by flame is holding the last road pony cliff could be the former Roger Pirates. Also, if you want to feel what it's like to be robbed by a pirate, consider spending some of your money on becoming a channel member. Thanks for watching the video to the end.